also it's really cold outside and uh, I'm bored. So I went and got some stuff at the hardware store today to try and make a copper cell. Um, this is a, uh, a setup that will take copper from one place and basically plate it onto another piece of copper in a pure form until the uh, anode is completely dissolved and then whatever's left over um, just stays in this little filter basket. So I went to Ace and I picked up some of these filter baskets um, and then I got this big old jar and this is copper sulfate so we'll make a solution of that to go in the jar and then this little catch cup will go in the bottom to catch any of the stuff that falls off of the uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw forks in here so we'll set it up here and try it out Okay, so this is going to be my anode or the kind of the collector and that's just going to go in the bottom of the jar here of my uh, sulfate solution and then I made this basket this filter basket here so I just took and cut the rubber ring off and then there's a little notch in it for the wire to come out of um, for when I need to set up the anode. I got my filter bag on the top there and I'll just use the ring here to secure it to the jar. This little jar that's going to go on the bottom and that'll act as kind of a collector. I'm going to start with a couple of copper pieces here um, before we start doing brass because the idea is ultimately that I can use this to refine the brass out. So they're in the little bucket there. Got my anode down there and we'll put 12 volts on. Okay it's all set up. <clears throat> um, I got 12 volts going in there. There's the collector down there and some of the undissolved copper sulfate. That'll dissolve eventually. Um, I'll just let it sit here and see what happens. So there's a lot of contamination in there i got to figure out, but you can see the uh, copper starting to form on the cathode slowly. Um, Amperage is going up, so I'm assuming that that's starting to work. It's pretty cool. Okay, so here's some of our crystal copper um, this is the first cathode and it's uh, started to develop a little bit of that cool crystal look um, but it's a little small it was getting really hot so I replaced it with a larger cathode right there and um, some different more leads to kind of change the amperage around a little bit so there's our new cathode in the in the solution we'll let it run for a while and see what we get that's pretty cool it's really starting to work now that is our crystal copper from our copper recovery cell okay so I've been cooking this overnight um, I changed the voltage a couple of times and let's see oh, it's pretty heavy oh that's cool Check that out. Oh, it's not going to come out the hole. Well, we'll get it as best we can. That's super neat, though. Look at that. It looks like copper corals. Check it out. Crystal copper. I'm going to change the setup just a little bit. I got some ideas, so we'll uh, I'll show you that next.
This is from last night. It started out at 12 volts and then kicked it down to 5 volts. The uh, higher voltage makes bigger branches. And then the lower voltage um, kind of fills them in and makes it beefier. Pretty neat, huh? The copper cell is absolutely dissolving the spoons slowly and it's leaving the silver behind. So any leftover silver plate that I got on these is just flaking off into the filter basket. Um, I have a couple full, fully silver plated spoons in there to see what happens. I'm going to check on those. Next. This spoon was fully silver plated when I put it in the copper cell. And you can see the base metal is being eaten away and the silver remains in the filter basket as metallic silver. So... This might be a better way of recovering silver than electroplate. Um, I might have to scale it up a little bit. We'll just see how it goes. I've been running this copper cell solution for a while, and it's kind of changed a little bit. The contaminants have turned it greenish, and the, what comes out, the crystals are a little bit less dense and not as good, and I'm assuming that's because the water's a little messed up now. So I'm going to try a couple other experiments. I got a big bucket one running. To see what comes out of that that's not going as well so i got a bunch of new vessels and some distilled water and uh, we're going to try a couple new versions add some zinc sulfate or copper sulfate the last couple versions i put the material on the top and then i have the cathode on the bottom to collect the material and i've got this filter bag but i don't think that's working particularly well because the contaminants kind of want to fall out of that bag. So in this version, I'm going to try putting all my materials in this container with a coffee filter on top. We're just going to try a plain coffee filter this time. And then I'm going to submerge that and put my cathode on the top and see if the crystals grow down towards the material and gravity helps keep the contaminants inside their little container. Okay, so here's our coffee filter. And then I just cut out the lid from this uh, container and that gives us a membrane um, I filled this with a solution so when I put it all down in there it should stay pretty isolated from the rest of the solution and hopefully we get some good crystals out of that so I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit and you can see it's filling up with water underneath the coffee filter so I got to give it a minute all right, so now we got it set up. This is version three. We have our um, material, our spoon material in the cottage cheese container down there. And that's been powered by this uh, wire, the insulated wire that goes into the jar. The top has got a coffee filter um, kind of strained over it to provide us a barrier, a membrane. And then we have our collector, the cathode right there. And we'll see what kind of crystals we get from this one. Okay, so we had our first little issue. Um, I had to poke a little hole in the middle of the filter paper down there. Um, because the air from underneath was trapped under the paper and it was not saturating. So there's a hole in the center there that might change things a little bit. But the reaction has immediately started. It had not started before and now we're already starting to get... Um, crystals forming on our copper danglies there. So this is pretty interesting. You can see our crystals starting to form down off of the little danglies that I got in there. Um, you can't see it in the video, but I can see a, uh, a little plume of something coming up. I think it's the uh, ionic flow from the copper, or the bronze dissolving in there. But there's our crystals getting ready to go. Pretty neat. All right, so it's working. Definitely a different, um, gravity's pulling the little copper guys down. Update on version 3. I don't know if having my, um, anode in the bottom there is going to work. You can see this lighter band here of, uh, liquid. And then it kind of, there's a line where the darker blue stuff, so my copper sulfate solution's down here. And what's happening is the uh, copper sulfate is uh, either 
turning into sulfuric acid or something's happening to this upper band right here but it's not the right solution and so we get this uh, much lighter loosely bonded copper particulate um, versus the nice crystals that I was getting before so this may not work because the copper sulfate wants to stay in the bottom and we get this uh, whatever's going on up here at the top um, I'll keep running it for a little bit because it is dissolving material and I'll I want to dissolve as much material as possible you can see this older version one here has been dumping a ton of copper into the bottom and it's been eating spoons and forks just kind of I just keep feeding them through there every night so we'll just keep letting that run for a while and see what we get in the filter basket but I may end up reprocessing this stuff later so we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna try a little experiment I believe that what's happening here is that um, as this process goes on and the hydrogen forms on the anode we're forming sulfuric acid from the copper sulfate breaking down and then the hydrogen interacting with uh, with that so <clears throat> it's uh, copper won't create more copper sulfate unless it's in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid because it needs to have an oxidizing agent so I've decided to try something since I suspect that a dilute solution of sulfuric acid is messing with the mix we're going to slowly add some hydrogen peroxide here um, that should oxidize some of the copper and help reform copper sulfate into the solution if there's any sulfuric acid present to go after the, cop the uh, copper oxide. So we're getting a lot of foam um, and that'll be the hydrogen peroxide interacting with the metal and turning convert turning into water and oxidizing the metal and then if there's any sulfuric acid in that solution the sulfuric acid should attack the copper oxide and presumably form copper sulfate or copper sulfide or some derivative thereof but not sulfuric acid so I'm trying to reduce the pH reduce I don't remember I'm trying to change the pH of this mixture okay so the hydrogen peroxide seems to have worked very well um, the solution has recovered its blue tint and I can already see these more reddish sulfides are becoming more coppery and we're not getting nearly as much um, electrolysis action hydrogen creation as we were before so I think we've lowered or raised the pH of the solution can never remember which way it goes it's more basic now or closer to neutral and it should behave more like the copper sulfate solution so we'll check back in two or three hours and see if we get better formations so um, our solution seems to have resolved its issues we're getting really good heavy plating now our crystals now you can see them growing up like little flowers there um, it's definitely working we've got it on 12 volts now and we'll just keep running it and see how it turns out so this solution I tried to reconstitute from used up solution and it's making a much different kind of product these are much finer pointier copper crystals a lot more evergreen like whereas before we were getting something that was kind of coral like I've changed the voltage from 12 to uh, let's focus here change the voltage from 12 to um, 5 volts and we'll see uh, if these thicken up a little bit and get a little tougher so here's our most current version of the copper crystal cell I found this vase at the thrift store that just perfectly fits those filter bags from those craftsman filter bags I got at ace um, this has a fully saturated solution of copper sulfate and we can see we got some really nice crystals in there but you can also see that we're already ha starting to have the solution separate which is what starts to degrade our crystal production so I'm gonna go ahead and change this out um, I figured out some ways to treat the solution and I'm gonna I'm also making a, I'll show you guys what the crystals look like on this but I'm trying different anode configurations and I'm also saying the crystals change as the copper sulfate solution matures 
So we're going to we're going to put another anode in there without changing the solution out and see how that changes the product of the or another cathode and we're going to see how that changes the product on the cathode for the next run. One of the perks of this setup is it's a lot easier to take out. I've got a cottage cheese container in the bottom there that's perforated to protect the filter bag because you got to protect the filter bag or the spoons will poke through it. Um, let's see what we got. Woo! Look at those little flowers. Oh, that's super cool just by itself. I'm going to have to save that one.